which is readily available by upcoming researchers. I use the word upcoming researchers simply because they are not the ones who collected that data, but it is useful for their research. So in, in other words, secondary data are always readily available compared to primary data. Uh, when you talk about secondary data, as already mentioned in my background, it is already existing data readily available for researchers to use in their own research. This is a type of data that is collected, that has already been collected in the past. Researchers may have collected the data for a particular project, then made it available for others to use. However, we also need to understand that it is, there are also other sources or the other info, I mean, objectives to why data is collected and kept in different sources available for people. If we can mention a specific example when the country is taking national census, that data is always available by the government bodies and the other researchers who come on the board, if they need to use that data for re respective projects, then they can go to, they can find that data useful. One thing that we need to understand also that whenever we are using this secondary data, researchers need to acknowledge the source. It is very important. Otherwise, these are not my words, but you are quoting words or statements or findings of a particular scholar. So we need to reference that, we need to acknowledge that or through citation. Researchers should also pay careful attention in using secondary data. You know, somebody who did who collected that data for the first time, which we, which we categorize under primary data, had what we call a statement of problem, a purpose for that research. He had specific research questions. So you who is coming in to use that data already collected in form of secondary data, you need to be very careful to ask to 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 re, I mean to make sure that the data you are using is aligned to the research problem of your topic. When we look at the characteristics of secondary data, first of all, the main aim is reanalyzing already existing data, then interpret it or reviewing the past data. However, we need to also know that. Secondary data, as you use it, you need to tell me what we call reliability of that data. When you talk of reliability of the data, we are looking at how was the data collected? How, what method were they used to collect? Who collected the data? What are those sources? So when you, when you are trying to look at that, you are determining what we call reliability of the data. Then how about suitability of the data as, a, as another characteristic of secondary data? We know people use the data, we collect the data for their own objectives. Now, the, for you, you are, or we are now coming on board using data that is already existing. The ascertain whether that data is suitable or aligned with your research objective. Three, we look at, I mean, four, we look at adequacy of the data. Is the data accurate enough for what you are aiming to do to carry out? Is it, I mean, is it enough compared to other sources of data, is it, if you find that the data is not, actu I mean, adequate enough, or accurate enough for whatever you are going to use, then you are advised to stop and look for alternative sources of data. That second data also is analyzed either quantitatively or quantitative. It should be qualitative or it can be analyzed quantitatively. However, the last item is that the second data, when you are talking about the second data, it is normally in a four step process. And that is also, I mean, that is as per specific scholars, because different people can have different processes of using the data, but basically it has been out, I mean, has been found that we can generalize or we can summarize those steps into four processes, four steps in the, of the process. So then when we look at sources of data, we have got uh, majorly published and unpublished data. When you talk of published data, we can talk about the journals, we can talk about the books, we can talk about uh, uh, different receptories where the data is readily available either or through the internet or, or through public libraries where one can easily access 
And then when we talk about unpublished data, we are looking at somebody has carried out a study. For example, many of our PhD students and the master students can carry out their study, marked and awarded their respective qualifications, but you find that the, the research they carried out is not published. You cannot access it on, online. No, you, yeah, generally you cannot access it online. That's what we refer as unpublished data. It does not mean that it is not useful for one's research. We can still use that given our research objective. Then when we talk of internal external forces, I mean internal sources, we are looking at organizations or you can be, maybe you are within a certain organization and you are able to get that research, I mean that is information or data from within the organization. And then external sources, it could be as mentioned uh, uh, to do with the sources outside your specific area of, of work, for example, outside your organization. That can also be useful for your research project. So in all in all, we can talk about books, personal sources, journals, newspapers, websites, government records, blogs, diaries, and podcasts, among others. Tools for data, for secondary data, we have got various tools for secondary data. That is to do with how data is collected using, I mean, second data is collected. Basically, there are several methods of use, I mean, collecting primary data, but when it comes to secondary data, there are specific tools that are used. One, we talk about bots. Bots are these, uh, 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 we call them, I would, I would, we call them, these are robots that are made available by programmers for, to help one to get specific information on the internet. We see when you go into the internet, we have got various, I mean, we have got mass of data and it may take you very long time to peruse through, get specific data you want. Hence, programmers have gone ahead to come up with the software robots that can help researchers, that can help researchers get specific data that they want for their specific study. We, can, we have also what we call electronic devices in terms of phones, maybe smartphones, it could be laptops, whereby one can be also be able to use in terms of collecting secondary data. And then the last item we talk about libraries. Libraries, uh, we have got what we call traditional libraries where one can go and be able to get information or data that is suitable for one's project. However, when you talk of libraries of secondary data, it can also be libraries which are on the internet that one can use or peruse through to get specific data for his or her research project. Allow me proceed. Uh, and we are looking at, at this point, we look at second data analysis. There are different stages of second data analysis, which involve either events before, during, and after data collection. But among this, we pay attention to the following steps when we are analyzing secondary data. One of them is that you should have a statement of purpose. All of us, as we attend this webinar, we have got different objects to why we're attending this webinar. The same thing as you go into a research project, you have to clearly state the purpose of why you are going into that. Why are you going into secondary data for your research project? Then you also look at the research design, the methods. You will need to have a plan of how you are going to carry out the research. Then after having that, that research design, we are talking about the plan in form of how are you going to get the data? When is that data supposed to be? When are you going to finish up the project? Who are collecting the data? How did, who, what are the sources? Those are steps falling under research design. Then three, we look at developing the research questions. From the research design, 
you now have to develop what we call specific research questions, which are going to guide you in, in your second data research analysis. Then after that, after drawing the specific question, which are going to guide you the sources of the secondary data, whereby we now move to what we call identifying secondary data. And then after getting secondary data, that's when you now move into the actual analysis of the secondary data, which you remember up there we talked about reanalyzing under the main objective, reanalyzing existing data. Then that's what we are calling evaluation of or evaluating secondary data. We cannot keep talking about uses of secondary data. There are several uses of secondary data. Among the few I've been able to establish is that secondary data can provide useful information that can help redefine, or I mean refine or, de or develop a, a project or a, a program plan. You have, in many cases, you have heard of people talking about the, my research question, I mean, the data collected did not fit my, my, my research objective. Why? Simply because the source of information you have got, the source of data you have got is not, is not accurate or is not suitable for your research project. That's why it can help you plan. It could be useful for another project, but not specific for your project. And in that process is where you go ahead to, re, to refine your research objective, to refine your project. Second data can also point to areas that might be investigated in further, I mean, in future. Here, we, if you look through many people's scholars' research, published articles, among others, there's always a section before conclusion indicating areas of further research that is particularly indicating how useful second data is. Second data can also be used to help assess change outcome or delivery outcomes or impact achieved. You see many people keep on carrying research and there's, for us scholars, we talk about replicating the studies. It could be replication in terms of different area, geographical areas could be replicating in terms of adding, I mean, the variables that are used. Here, to do that, you would, by, before replicating, you could be, or before coming up with, the, with your results, you could be comparing the current results vis-a-vis -vis the previous results which have been used by different scholars. And in that case, you can be able to change policies for a particular project. You could advise, for example, government, you could advise different bodies that much as research by scholar X mentioned about this and that, as per this current study, through the same data that was used by, by the previous research, researchers, we can now change this to this. Lastly, we say second data can be used to examine lessons learned from similar interventions. Currently, we are challenged by COVID-19 and the different studies are going on. So you may find that er the publication by scholar one could be altered or could be used as a base, a base for determining research by another scholar. As we all can be, I mean, as we can bear with me, that whatever we do, there are always negative side of it and positive side of it. Much as the second data is very useful at any stage of research and is, can be used by different people at any, any stage of their research process, we have got advantages and disadvantages of secondary data. One of the advantages is that because the data is readily available, it is as cheap compared to if one is to go to the field collecting data using a questionnaire, for example, by under primary data collection. In doing so also, because the data is readily available and stored somewhere, it saves time, the researchers time to get and be able to meet the deadlines or timelines of one's project. 
Second data is readily available and easily accessible by any scholar, I mean, any researcher who is interested for a particular project. And also, we know that most of these second data, of course, it has got also disadvantage about it, but it is professionally collected. By when you say professionally collected, that we have got the professional bodies or people, like for us, the, the procurement professions or under the supply chain, when you are carrying out your research specifically, for example, when you are talking about compliance with the regulatory framework, you look at your you look at who are the respondents. For example, when you are talking about public procurement, then we are able to cut out or to collect our data from specific prof professional procurement people in different procuring and disposing entities who are competent enough to give us the information that is required for our, our, our research. And once that data is collected, then out future coming researchers can use that because it was collected by professional people. Now, when you talk about these advantages, the merits of this second data is that it may be inappropriate for one who's research purpose. Mark you, Noah could have carried out research and collected data with a specific objective or problem statement. Now, when the professor and the comes on board using that very second data collected, you may find that generally the topic would be the same, but the specific object could be different. And in that process, the data that is readily available that have been collected by Noah here would not be would not fit professor's research purpose. And then also we look at different formats from which it is required. All of us, as we carry out our research, we have got different outline. We have got different formats the way we write our projects. Hence, when you when one comes on board to pick out this data, you may find that it is not appropriate or it is not in a direct or specific format the way you require it to. Hence, you will need to modify your your yeah the format so that it can be able to fit into what you want. Of course, all that is time wasting and may not actually achieve your objective at some times. Then there's lack of control over quality of the data. That's why members, when you go to, on the internet, you may find a lot of information there, but not all that information there is of quality. Hence, we need to be careful on the data, data collected via secondary data. It may not answer your research question. That is right. That the, the research question that I use, that's why we have got all those four processes of using secondary data or analyzing secondary data. One is that there is an aspect of, I mean, a statement of purpose. Why are you collecting secondary data? All that is put in place in order to guide you to come up with the data that you want for your research project. Hence, you may come across the data, second data, which is not fitting or which is not answering your research question. Another this demerit here is that we, are, we talk about it provides insufficient information. That's why researchers, I may pick a topic that has been developed by research, researcher X, and then I build on it to a certain level. Simple, why am I building on that one? What, wherever he stopped, there's something that was not completed. If you are talking about four variables or four factors defining compliance with the regulatory framework, you may find another researcher expanding that to six factors. Hence, the four factors were not enough for, for are not enough to make a conclusion to be based on by other or to be agreed upon by scholars. And that's why research is an ongoing. It keeps on improving, improving, improving as time goes on. Why is it improving? Because the previous researcher could have done his great work fine, but it was based on insufficient information. Three, I mean, last, second last is that we have got what we call exaggeration of data. No, you may need specific information well, but again, people at times exaggerate their statements. I could quote, for example, Professor Amber could, could have done maybe to do with compliance with the regulatory framework in the supply chain. Let me just make it that way. 
but the information that is available could be beyond the arena of supply chain. That's what we're calling exaggerated data. Hence, you need to, be, to pay attention the limits within which the data to use for your specific project. And then lastly, under this advantage, we also have what we call outdated data. That's why in many cases, supervisors always encourage their students to keep on what we call have current data, have current data, current citations. That is one of the things that define that the data is outdated. It could not be, we are in the, our, our fields are dynamic, that they keep on changing as time goes on. So if you rely on past data to make policy implication for the future, then you may find that it will, it will guide you wrongly, simply because the data we are basing on to make your, your conclusions, for, to develop policies to guide different bodies, it could be wrong. Uh, members, I would conclude by looking at, I will make my conclusion. And here we have talked about that, that second data is really important in research, generally in business, and then statistics, that when we have this second data, we, it can guide us to come up with conclusions or with the policies viable or fitting our study. Uh, second data is provided for different reasons, but it is not limited to price, availability, needs of the, the research. In some cases, all the second data may be the only source of data. This could be attributed to high cost of conducting data. However, it doesn't mean that researchers should be discouraged from finding alternative means beyond secondary data. As mentioned, in our previous slide, we have got uh, secondary has got what we call the uh, disadvantages, which may have a negative effect on one's project or one's research. However, secondary data has got also advantage over, over primary data that is ranging from costs to availability. Hence, researchers should, be, should pay careful attention when using secondary data, as it may be, I mean, it has to be aligned with the research purpose, question, and problem statement among few aspects. That is all my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. If there are any questions, please.